Hi everyone, I'm immigration lawyer John Kasravi. Thank you for joining me today, Thursday, or sorry, Wednesday, September 30th for our weekly uh, live Q&A session. I know we're used to doing it more days a week, but I'm concentrating it all on Wednesdays, now 5 p.m. Pacific time. Every Wednesday, today being September 30th, the first time we're doing that. Typically this is half an hour long, but because it's only one day a week now, maybe we'll go a little longer if we have some good questions piling up that I can answer for you. So I just wanna jump into uh, some important notes before I go into the Q&A section. Uh, we got some really big news yesterday. There was going to be a massive fee hike in most types of visa cases coming on October 2nd. Uh, and you know, immigration lawyers had a really busy weekend the last couple of days preparing all these cases they were gonna submit. But last second yesterday, uh, we learned that a court filed, uh, accepted an injunction, which means at the very least a temporary stop on it uh, for some legal reasons. So there is gonna be not gonna be a fee hike, at least for now, but with the way things go with these courts, we don't know how long that's gonna last. If it's gonna come back next week, the week after, we don't know. So if you do have a case, it's better to submit it right now as it is. There's also a similar injunction that happened for the public charge rule in the form I-944 for those filing the green card for within the United States. Um, but that injunction was lifted and uh, people are required to submit the form I-944. They gave leeway in that if you're submitting a green card case now within the US, you don't have to submit the form I-944 with the application package. But after the 13th, everyone has to submit those all together. If you file the case without the form I-944 now, or if you did during the injunction period, they'll just send you a letter, an RFE, a request for evidence letter uh, later. And in that letter, they'll say, please submit the I-944 information, documentation, paperwork. Uh, but for now, until the 13th, you can submit the I-485 green card application for adjustment status without that. So those are some, some hot news I wanted to share with you, just so y'all know uh, of what's going on in the immigration system right now. As you can see, every couple hours it changes. So it's really difficult on clients, it's really difficult on immigration lawyers as well. And with that, let's get it started. All right, thank you everyone for, for jumping in. We have uh, questions piling up already, so we're gonna go into a second. We're live on YouTube, JQK Law Firm, live on uh, Instagram, JQK Law Firm, and Immigration Lawyers, I'm sorry, uh, TikTok at Immigration Lawyer John. So we're doing multiple angles in the recording here for the YouTube, that's the angle I'm looking at is the recording. Uh, before we start, as a reminder, this is general education only. It's not intended for case-specific advice, so if someone's asking questions that are very specific, I have to tell them I can't answer that. You should consult with an immigration lawyer in private, but here's some general information about what's going on in the system. And so let's just jump in these questions, starting with YouTube. Russia asks, good evening, sir. Thank you for the good work. I appreciate that. God bless you too as well. I received my receipt notice of action. What is the next step? Uh, I don't know, I have to see, if you filed your case and they sent you initial receipts, uh, then you need to wait for them to do biometrics or request for evidence. But without knowing the whole case and exactly what's your situation, I can't say exactly what's next in your particular type of case, because I don't know what type of case it is, so it could be a lot of things going on. So I need to ask, hello, I'm filing my N-400, that's application for citizenship. There's one question asked, have you ever been arrested, cited, or detained? Well, you gotta answer that honestly, uh, but that's too case specific. It's such a big question. It's one of the main questions or issues and reasons why people hire immigration lawyers in these kind of cases is for that one question. So please consult with an immigration attorney in private for questions about uh, criminal history and stuff because there has to be a good analysis of that done. Maybe it's not a problem. I just actually got done with a consultation 10 minutes ago with a guy that was detained uh, and I told him, well, the, the, the situation for you isn't bad. You need to get some paperwork for it, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem for citizenship, but that's his case. I don't know the details of your case and I can't go into that here in this public forum. I don't, I don't recommend you, you talk about it publicly either. Last guy says, hello, John. Uh, can we, uh, good to see you. Uh, can we fly from UAE JFK on a B1, B2 with family? Well, if you don't have any stops in like Europe, for example, those travel bans won't be there. Um, generally you can if you get some like direct flight. I think uh, Emirates has a direct flight from UAE here, but it depends. How, did you recently visit China? Did you recently visit Iran? Did you recently visit Brazil, England, the EU region, Schengen region? If that, then no, if, it's, if you did that in the last two weeks. Also, I don't know enough about your background. Your, are your visas valid? Did they expire? How much time do you have on your passport? These are all things I have to check before I can give you an answer like that. So I can't say exactly. Generally, a person can come to UAE, United States on a B1, B2 visa. A B1, B2 visa is a tourist visa. But whether you can in particular, uh, I don't know the details of your case, so I can't answer that uh, individually. But good question, though. Thank you. All right, let's jump to TikTok. Um, Willy Wonka says, are you a teacher? I, I am a professor of immigration law at a few colleges, uh, law schools, but yeah. Um, Kyle says, look at my PFP, I'm not sure what that is. Abash says, 
I submitted my N400 paperwork in April, but I didn't get a response till date. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'll have to see what's going on with your case individually. Slow word asks, my husband's H1 is expired. We apply for renewal. Also, I, I spouse can I, can I spouse file, can you advise? No, I can't advise. I don't, I don't really have information. This is a private consultation matter. Ghosted ask, are I-130 visas interviews open in Pakistan? Yes, I've heard people getting interviews. Uh, but it's, it depends on the case and the facts of the case. Dustin says, hi, do I get the work permit first before the marriage interview or vice versa? You, if, you, if they get around to approving your work permit before your marriage green card interview, yeah, it's possible to get it first. Sometimes they take so long, you just get your green card in the meantime. A lot of green card cases are super backed up right now, so most likely you'll get your work permit uh, many, many months before the actual interview, but I've seen it both ways. Uh, if you have your interview and you're approved, you'll just never get the work permit and the green card will act as a proof of work. Uh, Jat asks, how to get a green card in guardianship case and how long this case? That's, uh, I need to know your case to be able to advise on that. You're welcome, Judwadi. Uh, Chala asks, what's your opinion downgrading EB2, EB3 in India? Can I switch back EB2 if final action date comes current? I mean, you can maintain the old I-140. It's not really downgrading. It's just submitting a new I-140. Uh, but I, I, I would need to know your facts, your case, your life history, and all the things going on with you before I can advise on, on, on telling you what to do. I don't want to get into that without knowing the individual facts. Uh, P, P Chat asks, what happened after, field, the, after you filed the paper for removal of conditions? Um, you wait for them to make a decision on that. Uh, Irving asks, is there still no way for DACA to become resident citizens? Yeah, DACA never had uh, the ability to get green cards. So, so getting a green card in the United States is the only thing you have to apply for. Having DACA, Deferred Action of Child Arrivals, has no link to uh, getting a green card directly itself. Dustin asks, gotcha, thanks bro, God bless you, God bless you too, very helpful and informative as always. Thank you Dustin, I really appreciate it. If you had the time, uh, I would have really liked, appreciate of you that uh, you go to Google, type in JQK Law Firm, and on my firm website it comes up, leave me a five star review. That'd be much appreciated, it helped me a lot. But thank you. Gurpeet asks, illegally entered, uh, applied for asylum with one year, married US citizen, I want three approved consular processing. Well, if you have an asylum case pending, I'm not sure if you want to do consular processing, if it's a good asylum case. Um, it's, it's too detailed. I, I, you need to consult immigration in private. So a lot of these questions are too individualized that I don't want to just, you know, in a, I don't know anything about you. I don't know anything about your case. For me to just say to do this is not right. It's like calling a doctor and just say I'm coughing and the doctor giving a prescription of medication. You might have an allergy to that medication. I can't take that risk. So these are the kind of questions you have to talk with a lawyer in private with their help. I don't want to risk giving bad advice and ruining your life. You know, that's the last thing I want to do. Me ask, how long does adjustment of status for FB take? A year, two years, three years? Um, Azu says, hello, did you work with I-730 cases? No, I don't do I-730 uh, many years now. And there, a lot of them are backed up because the government's messing around. I-730 are spouse and children of asylee cases, and they're really messing around with those cases right now on the government side. Irving says, thank you, sir. God bless. God bless you as well. Thank you. You're welcome, Chala. Thank you. Irving says, I'll send my five-star review right now. Thank you, John. You appreciate it, Irving. That's very nice of you. Thank you. Ricky says, any ETA on SN51 interview marriage based after biometric waiver? Uh, no, just there's no way to it. You go check out USCIS.gov. Sandeep asks, uh, hi sir, my interview scheduled is ready for October 29th. Can you give me good luck? Yeah, good luck. I hope everything's well. Hope you are prepared. Uh, what kind of interview is it, Sandeep? Marriage-based case, employment-based case? Let me know. Uh, but hopefully, you know, you'll get it. You'll get the green card. I'm sure you've been waiting for a long time. Dustin asks, one more question. All the types of forms will have a notice of action, right? Yeah, notice of action is just whenever USCIS sends you a paperwork. That's what a notice of action is. It doesn't really give me as an immigration lawyer any kind of information that's helpful on your case because you have to know what exactly is in it. So a notice of action, in a way, these are uh, the terminology people who go online on certain websites where people try to do on their own and they talk about NOA1, NOA2, notice of action. These, don't, these are just general terms that don't mean anything. You have to see, is it a receipt notice? Is it a request for evidence? Is it an approval? Um, that's the context of it. So just notice of action just means they, they, they're giving you information. Lilian says, I can, I can make a petition for my sister is married. Uh, I think you're asking, can you apply for your sister's green card? You can start the process if you're a U.S. citizen, but it's going to take many years. Even if your sister's married, that's fine. So say, do please hold. Let me get some questions um, on uh, what's called Instagram. Jignish asks, can family members having ownership interests file I-130 under EB1CL1A? 
Well, when you, EB1C is when you're doing inter, you're working for a company overseas and you transfer to the U.S. company and you work there. If there's ownership interest, yeah, you can fi- ownership interest itself is fine. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of my clients own the company that they're working that they're going to get the EB1C for. So that's the least of the problems. It's more about like the whole case itself. Uh, and EB1C L1 are really complicated cases, uh, and the government is being horrible about them and the way they're treating them. So that's like you know, your basic question about ownership interest doesn't matter. We have to be straight up and tell them about ownership interest. Uh, but that's the least of the worries in one of those cases. Jignesh, uh, classic. Okay, sorrow gas. Hi, after marriage green card interview, given white paper, it says your case is being held for review. What does this mean? Usually how many days we get approval of denial notice? Um, I don't know. I don't know how your interview went. It could mean anything and there's no timeline on it. I don't know enough about your case to be able to tell you what it means and doesn't, but it could mean anything. And yeah, again, timelines are not set in stone. All right, let's go back to YouTube. Uh, ooh, we got a bunch of questions here. Okay, sorry, I was out. Let's see. Is the payment is pay, is the payment required for EAD renewal when you pay for I forty five? Right now, no. When you're renewing a, a green card, a, a work permit based on having a green card case pending, a C nine category employment authorization document EAD uh, on form I seven six five, you do not need to submit a new fee when you're doing a renewal. That's not needed. Nick asks, can a person married to a U.S. citizen waiting for a conditional green card when receiving EAD, apply for unemployment benefits if previously worked unauthorized prior to receiving it. You know, unemployment benefits is not an immigration issue, it's an employment and state-based thing. So I'm not gonna comment on something that's not immigration related. You probably can, but again, I don't, I don't wanna talk about stuff that I'm not an expert on. Said so asks, it, it's a general question. I have two tickets, but one of them is not my driving, is not on my driving history, and one looks like that one Looks like that one of them has been removed from the record after three years. Do I need to report it? You need to be honest and report everything that you had. So I, that's the only answer I give to that. Enrique asks, I renewed my green card in June 20, 2020, I-90. My green card expires in November 2020. I didn't get it before it expires. Can I continue working in the United States? Yeah. Um, what happens is you probably should have done a fingerprinting notice. On the finger, when you do the fingerprinting, they'll put a sticker on your green card that acts as an extension of it, or you'll get a green card stamp. Just because your green card expires doesn't mean you don't have work authorization or you don't have a green card. It just means the documents expire, but you can continue working and stuff. If you need it for work, again, uh, your green card, uh, when you go fingerprinting, they'll put a sticker on it that gives an extension. Or if they don't do that, you can schedule a time with the local field office to get a stamp in your passport that acts as an extension of your green card. But you really should consult an immigration attorney, Enrique, to see, should, is it time for you to file for citizenship now? Citizenship appropriate. Why keep renewing stuff and be on that? So we have the, that's something I would check out in your type of case. Wilmaka well, says, hello, John. Good job. Thanks for Jamaica. Oh, thank you so much. I have a lot of fans of Jamaica. I'm a big fan of Jamaica myself. Uh, I have a lot of clients there too. It's a wonderful place. Um, you know, it's the, the living by the ocean. It's good living. <laughs> Daniela Basso says, I live in U.S., married with a U.S. citizen. Do I have to file I-130 and I-45 together or can be separate? I don't know. There's more things I would need to know. But Daniel, if you want information about that kind of stuff, the best resource to start is my Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide. And I, I wrote a 40, 41 page guide that could really help you. Just go to www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com, www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com. Make sure to include the www part or else it won't work. And download the Ultimate Marriage Green Card ebook or guide and I'll have a breakdown of stuff. And then after you have that, if you can understand something, you need more information, you should, you should just do it generally, but consult with an immigration attorney in private for, for more guidance. Uh, that'll definitely help you out though. But it's a good starting point is the guide. It's free. Uh, just download it and it'll help you out. Marlena says, thank you. You're welcome. David asks, can an, uh, can an undocumented Im- immigrant apply for a green card self-petition if they enter unlawfully? So maybe, I mean, there's a lot more information I know. It's going to be hard, but uh, there's exceptions to everything. So I can't say 100% no. Most likely you can't, but uh, then you might fall within one of the exceptions. So that's something I would need to have a private consultation about to look into. Daniel says, thank you so much. You're welcome, Daniel. I hope that, that ebook's gonna cover most of your questions. I spent a lot of time on it and it covers everything. Uh, not everything, there's a, there's a million things you have to cover, but all the big questions that people constantly ask me, uh, it's in there. And then once you have that and you have an understanding of how the system works, that way you could then consult an immigration attorney and ask really good questions. And you can tell if the lawyer knows what they're talking about or not, or if they're yanking your chain and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's a good situation right there. But uh, you're welcome, Daniel. On uh, Instagram, uh, Jignish says, thanks, uh, do for answer one, I have a passport expiration in five months and am I eligible to file in October for I-485? Is that okay or I need longer validity? 
To file for the i485, the password doesn't even have to be valid. You need to have some valid ID later to, uh, just in case, but the, for the i485, password validity doesn't matter. But just renew your password if you can. I mean, why not? But uh, yeah, just a lot more going on that I would need to advise on the i485, but that's for that. Say it on TikTok as, hi sir, I sent my request for evidence to USCIS on September 10th. They still, still they not send me any letter. Yeah, it's just gonna take a while, be, be patient. Sandeep says, marriage based sir. Um, okay, so Sandeep, congrats on that if you're still on. Um, yeah, just, I would say download the, my ebook because at the end of the ebook, I have four pages of practice questions for the marriage green card interview. And so just practice that with your spouse. So just go to www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com and then uh, go download the ebook that's there uh, when you punch in your, your, your email address. And then go to the end of the book, and there's an appendix there um, that goes into the questions that are part of the marriage green card case. So I think that'll be helpful. And I wish you good luck and, and you know, report back on how it goes. Please do that. Uh, Sandy, can you give me some advice? Yeah, so the best thing is you go to the ebook, be prepared, uh, have all the documents, original copies of everything that you prepared uh, to bring with you. I don't know your individual case to see if there's any inadmissibility issues or anything, so I can't advise on that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, you know, you, you, you could do it. And just <laughs> be prepared. Eliana says, thank you, God bless you, God bless you too, Eliana. Uh, uh, a case asks, how long to wait for a green card applied based on asylum? What is the longest time? There's no the longest time. It's going to take however long they want. We have another question about how long n 400 takes. They vary. Uh, AZ says, thank you, you're welcome. Ricky asks, uh, your knowledge and hold on the subject is commendable. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. I really appreciate that. Now, I spent a lot of time studying immigration law. Uh, you're all watching my JQK channel. It's my firm channel. I have a different YouTube channel and program called the Immigration Lawyers Toolbox. And I do a lot of preparation for that. And I talk to all the experts in the field. I interview them constantly. And I'm parts of different groups. I have my own groups for lawyers. So, and I teach at, at I, I stopped teaching it to law students. I only teach to other lawyers now. Uh, but it's uh, a lot of study. And you re the crazy thing is I study all day um, and I teach this stuff and every day I'll learn something new in immigration law. It's, immigration law is unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, it's that, that uh, complicated. It's unfortunate because it makes it almost impossible to do it on your own. <laughs> this kind of stuff, you have to hire an expensive lawyer. And it's really hard for me too because a lot of times I don't know the answer to stuff. I mean, the stuff we ask here are the typical questions. But when we get into a case, there's always an issue that pops up that requires me to study more. It's never ending. The fortunate part is it always keeps it fun. It's always fresh. I'm always learning something new. So it makes my life uh, enjoyable in the sense I'm a curious person. So it feeds that curiosity. But when it comes to the grind of the work, it's hard because every day, especially with Trump, every three, four hours, I used to say every couple of years, things changed in immigration law when I first started. Then it was every two years, then one year, then six months. At this point, every three to four hours, immigration law, part of it changes because of the Trump administration. And so it becomes pretty impossible to keep up on it. And and that's why it's, it's so difficult. And the question that's here are typically general kind of stuff I can say off the top of my head. But when we go really nuanced, it's it's crazy how complicated it's gotten. But thank you, Ricky. Tony asks, I have a custody of my 15-year-old and my application canceled from divorce. Where do I stand? Uh, I don't know, Tony. I got to review your documents. See, it asks, hi, sir. I sent a request for evidence to USCIS. Okay, um, you just got to be patient. I already answered that one. Chalms asks, does EAD, the work permit through employment, have any restrictions? How different is it from green card? If you get an EAD uh, for, through employment, I'm not sure what you mean through employment. Are you saying you applied for a green card and got an EAD? Or is it like an, um, a spouse of a O1 or a spouse of an L1 that gets an EAD? A spouse of O1 doesn't get an EAD actually, but I, I need to know exactly what kind of EAD you have. So um, I, I'm not sure about that. Jignish asks on JK Law, your knowledge and speed is awesome. Should petitioner company be making as much profit, which is the sum of salary of all green card filed by that company? Yeah, for when you when a company files for a green card for their employee, they have to show they can afford to pay them all the salaries. So if, if at the time of filing they can't show that they make sufficient income to cover all those salary costs, uh, then they're going to deny the case. So you want to have a buffer. Sometimes people don't have it all, but you have a lot of savings, for example, that could be a backup, but it's not recommended. You really want the company to make enough money to support the income of the uh, green card applicant or else they can potentially deny the case. Um, and so that's really serious. Uh, SAP says, how long does it take for USCIS to cash a check? I sent adjustment of status two weeks ago already, what to do. Right now, they're so bombarded by cases, it could easily be four or five weeks before they cash a check, unfortunately. It's very stressful, <laughs> but that's how it is. Uh, it, it, it's really annoying. And immigration lawyers too, I have cases also on three weeks have gone by, they haven't cashed a check. It's like, what happened? They lose it, they did not accept it. Is it being returned? You're welcome, Jignesh. 
And so, but um, you gotta wait a month nowadays. So many people are filing, especially right now, because a lot of people filed because the public charge rule seemed to be on hold, so they got a ton of files dumped on them at the USA's Chicago lockbox. And then um, now with the fee increase that was happening, a ton of other people filed the case too. So they're swamped with work. They're also understaffed because they, they say they don't have enough money. So people are on furlough, less people coming into the office because of COVID-19. So it's a recipe for delay and disaster. That's what that is. A lot of mistakes happening too. A lot of people, I have, I have colleagues who got cases sent back. They paid the full fee and the case comes back saying, you didn't pay us the fee. You know, like, no, I did. They didn't pay attention. Or you didn't submit this one application that you were supposed to. And the application is in the package. They stamped it saying received in the package. But then they say they didn't receive it, so they were sending it back. So there's a lot of this kind of nonsense happening, unfortunately. And we're seeing it. It's very stressful. Uh, but that's just the way it is right now. Okay, let's see. Uh, Chalam asks, once the I-45 is applied and approved and changed from EB2 to EB3, do we need to do a new I-45 with I-140? Uh, probably, uh, maybe not. You can sometimes transfer your I-485. I have to see what's going on exactly. One great ask, do you have any idea about when the borders will open? Well, the borders are generally open except for land borders to the United States. Uh, those is only for essential travel. And there's some travel bans uh, related to COVID-19 and some older travel bans, but that's about it. Generally, the borders are open. Uh, let's see, we, staff keeps asking the same question. The Rock fan asked, bro, can I change, uh, can, I can change case other state my last hearing in April, so what good month? I don't know what you're talking about. Consult an attorney in private to see what the situation is. Uh, Neuro asked, how could I start the process of getting my spouse a visa to be here if my spouse is here already undocumented? Well, download my ebook. It talks about the issue. You might need a waiver unless your spouse has a visa exception. My gardener is outside. Hopefully, the sound doesn't come. But download the ebook, www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com. It'll kind of break down the situation so you have it right there. Um, but, um, you know, it may be a waiver unless we can get uh, some sort of exception to that. Uh, Jignish asks I 45 filed, but L1 expired before EAD and AP received. Is it considered lawful presence? If you filed your I-485, um, you're in a period of authorized stay. It's not necessarily lawful presence, but you can stay pending a decision. Uh, but you don't want to work during that until you get the EAD or AP. That could be uh, considered uh, inappropriate work. And if it adds up, it, it causes a denial of your case. So be careful. But if you had an I-485 filed on a work-based case, you really have an attorney you can consult with. So take care of that. Great Scott follows up regarding COVID travel bans. Yeah, they're there. So there's uh, restrictions on land porter entry uh, if you're driving in, depending on what you're doing. And then there's still travel bans for certain countries, depending on certain kind of visas and all that kind of stuff. Consult an attorney in private to see how it works for you. Uh, Fed asks, RFE for I-485 replied six days ago. Should I raise an inquiry? No, it just takes a while. You can always try, but I mean, it just takes a while. Sap says, thank you for answering. You're welcome. Hashmi asks, how long for N-400 citizenship? I don't know. Uh, Sound says, Hey, do you have any idea about the Fresno field office? They started scheduling merit based uh, Fresno. I'm not sure if they have yet. They probably have started somewhat, but uh, I, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Neuron says, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we got a question on YouTube. Esther asks, hi, can you explain from DS5540 step by step? As a US citizen, I petitioned my husband and the NBC is asking to submit this form. Oh, really? Let me see. Uh, the DS5540 uh, is a, a form Let's see which one is it. They consult with immigration private. There's an injunction that should put the the DS5540 on hold. Esther, which embassy is asking this? Right now, they're generally not asking this. And uh, there was an injunction. Uh, one injunction stopped the DS5540 is for public charge. They're asking a question about your finances. They stopped it in the United States to ask that question in the embassy. The US version was overturned. I think the embassy person was overturned too. And in general, they're not asking about it yet. So it's surprising that the embassy uh, has asked you for the 5540. So one is consult an immigration as soon as possible. That's peculiar. Uh, but also let me know which embassy it is that would ask that. It's, it's, uh, that's not good, you know, that they're asking that. It's very annoying for them to get into that. It might be because of your personal financial situation, they didn't like your effort to support for some reason, I don't know. but. Um, let me know about how that works. Jignish, you're welcome. Thank you as well. F, uh, FBET, thank you. One Great Scott, thank you. You're welcome. I uh, appreciate uh, all the questions and stuff. We got uh, you know five more minutes left if you have some questions. But a lot of you have these questions about timelines. I don't have answers for those. Go to USCIS.gov. Check it out. They're not reliable timelines, but check it out. But also for the marriage cases, go to www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com. 
uh, and download the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide. It breaks down a lot of this stuff for you, all the main stuff you need to know, and it'll really be a first step to, to starting the case. After that, you should consult an immigration journey. Things change rapidly, so you gotta constantly get updated. And these books, you know, as soon as I write them, they're outdated, so you can't rely on it 100%, but it's a good start to get you familiarized with the key terms in the process, so you have an idea what's going on, so you can make a better decision for your case and, and, and just for your life as a, as a couple. So the big question is this downgrade right now. If you have a, uh, I'm sure I didn't go into this complicated, but um, the timelines for Indians to be able to start the green card process got a little faster, not to get the green card, but to start it. And so some, uh, it's just such a big category. I'm not gonna go into it. <laughs> Sorry guys. The Rock fans is, boy, uh, bro, can I change my venue? You may be able to, but um, it depends on your case. Uh, so that's why Rock, you gotta consult an immigration attorney. Uh, David asks, uh, can an undocumented student apply to any college as an international student so there's no new fees, right? Uh, okay, so undocumented students in California could just file, not as an international student, as a regular resident. So that's not an immigration question, but in California at least, um, they made it so that if you're not documented, you could just do that. That's fine. Uh, Emerlo, I'm not doing live Q&As and videos, so uh, just type in your question. Uh, Daniel Basso, so there's no new fees right now. The fee increase is on hold right now. I don't know what's gonna to happen tomorrow, but at this second, when we're talking September 30th, 2020, at 5.22 p.m. Pacific, there's no fee. But, and there's fees, but there's no new fees, no new changes. But who knows? <laughs> With the way things go in immigration, um, they could easily change. Uh, Rio Muhammad asks, hey John, I hope you're doing well, thank you too. What do you think about advanced AP for K1 at this time, are they working on AP at all? Um, getting AP on K-1 usually is worthless, um, but the thing is, so a K-1 is a fiancé visa, a person who comes here to get married. Um, you don't want to apply for AP based on the K-1. When you're filing the marriage case after you got married, you can file for, uh, by AP do you mean uh, advanced parole or do you mean administrative processing? So you got to be more specific, real mom. I actually clarified that. The Rock says, bro, my case in Chicago, my master's degree was in April. And so I moved the case to New York. Um, so if you move, you could probably change it, but you gotta go through the process. So uh, when you have a court case, you gotta have an immigration attorney. There's no way around it. You, you're most likely gonna fail if you don't. So that's why uh, these are the kind of things you wanna talk to a lawyer in private. Probably it's okay, but you know, talk about that. So administrative processing. So Real Mohammed got administrative processing uh, for K-1. Um, uh, that's it, you, it's just it is what it is. So I don't have an answer for you. Uh, administrative processing is when you do your interview and then they say, oh, we need to think about it some more, we'll let you know. And it could be a week, two weeks, it could be one year, two years, three years. If it's going past the six month mark, that you should think about suing them potentially, uh, filing a lawsuit for that delay. Uh, but you know, that is, that's a crappy situation to be in, sorry about the language, but administrative processing is like a black hole. Jignesh asks, how soon can we change job after receiving EAD and AP before green card? Well, if you're doing a point-based case, I-140, um, if you file the I-485 application for adjustment status and six months go by, you technically can't find a new job that's in the same or similar position, but you 100% need to talk with the immigration beforehand in private for uh, in information about that uh, because you gotta see what's going on, uh, if it's appropriate, I don't want you to mess that up. Emerlo says, what about the embassies? What about the Emerlo? I don't know what your question is. The Rock fan says, I know, bro, I got returning by police, uh, it just said it's possible. Yeah, it's possible, but I, I said it's possible to change it, but you know, you gotta do it right and figure out what's going on. Well, I says, thank you, John, good luck. Thank you, you too, I appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, I mean, uh, everything is possible, that's the thing. <laughs> that's why you gotta be careful what you say. Uh, it's possible, yeah, you just, you request a venue hearing. Will the judge approve it? I don't know. Um, it's up to the judge. So is it possible? Yeah, it's possible, a lot of things are possible, but so you gotta give it a shot. My manager had a sense of happy face, you too. Prashita says, is there any way to make I-751 processing f uh, faster? Very rarely. Uh, I-751 is removal of conditions, taking between one to two years on average. Um, you gotta have a really good reason why you, you wanna make it faster. Jose Perez says, is there any <clears throat> uh, benefits to being in the military? If you're in the US military, yeah, sometimes there are certain benefits here, things working out faster for citizenship or for green card or you know forgivenesses for certain things. So there's, it depends on what your background is, what you need, what kind of benefits that you need. That's how we gotta look for it. So when you have a consultation like that, I see what kind of problems your case has or what kind of needs you have, and then I see how we can use being in the US military could help that. So uh, it's too broad a question. Is that benefits? Yeah, generally it does. 
Does it benefit most people? No, it makes no difference for most spouses of military citizens from, from my cases, but sometimes it's needed. For example, if you, uh, you're, you, you're in the US military, your parents enter the United States without a visa and just you know unlawfully entered, they potentially can get that fixed and get a green card through you if you're a US citizen. So that will help that out, but I'm not sure if you have that specific situation. So we gotta see how it is. The Indian chef asked, do they only do the interview for the K-1 visa for India and Mumbai? Uh, I don't know exactly what in case they're doing in Mumbai. I haven't done a case there. They're probably they're doing U.S. citizen case, spouse cases too, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Shah says, when they schedule for interview, um, I do whatever they want. So that's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's not up to me. Uh, all right, so I think we're, we hit the 30 minutes mark. Thank you so much for everyone who joined today. We'll be back again next week, Wednesday, to answer your questions. In the meantime, if you want to schedule a paid consultation in my office, just email me at info at jqklaw.com. And uh, the Ultimate Marriage Green Card Guide is available for free, no cost, at www.marriageimmigrationlaw.com. All right, everyone, that's it for today. God bless, be safe, and I'll see you all next week. Catch more videos a daily posted on JQK Law, the YouTube page, along with other long-form videos I put. This is just only live, but we do the rest there. I'm located in Los Angeles, but I take cases from across the world. My location does not matter for the kind of cases that I handle. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless, be safe. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.